Vector Addition, Lesson 210. So in the previous lecture, we were looking at arrows, basically. A vector can be represented as an arrow, and we use vectors to represent such things as like forces, because forces you can represent as an arrow because you could say, hey, I'm pushing with 50 pounds of force. You make the arrow have a length of 50 pounds. And I'm pushing that way, so you point the arrow that way. If you're pushing twice as hard, you're going to make the arrow twice as long. And if you're pushing in a different direction, of course, you're going to put the arrow in a different direction. So the arrow makes a, or the vector, makes a really nice, uh, convenient way to represent the forces and helps us think about them, analyze them. And what's kind of amazing to me is that we can actually add arrows together in order to figure out total forces or net velocities or or things like that. So that's what this lesson is all about. Now, page one here, it says four very basic cases. I do mean very basic cases. I'm hoping the first three are gonna seem mighty intuitive and perhaps even trivial. Uh, the fourth one, I hope you go wow at, and then we have two more that are like, Serious math problems. Okay, so anyway, let's look at some very basic cases. So we got Biff and Bonnie here. They're having a tug of war. Let's assume they got a rope. Biff has a team, actually. And Biff's team pulls with a total force of 500 pounds to the right, so we can represent that as an arrow. Maybe maybe this is like the middle of the rope or something. So the, his team's rope is pulling 500 pounds to the right. Bonnie's team, meanwhile, is pulling 500 pounds to the left, so try to make those arrows have the same length there. And they're both 500 pounds. And one's going to the right, and one's going to the left. And the question is, what happens? At this moment of time, what happens? And the answer is, nothing much, right? Except maybe a lot of, you know, huffing and puffing or whatever. <laughs> People digging their feet in or whatever, but zero net Force. Now the rope is in tension. I'll grant you that the rope is in tension. But if you were like to tie like a little flag or something in the middle of the rope, like they sometimes do, there would be no net force on the flag. It's not going to the right. It's not going to the left. It's not moving at all. There's no net force on it. It's just zero net force. They cancel. So 500 to the right, which by the way, you could represent that this way, right? 500 along the x direction, nothing along the y direction, and then. Bonnie's team over here you could represent as negative 500 along the x direction, nothing along the y direction. And if you were to add these up, you would add the 500 and negative 500 and say there's nothing going on in the x direction and also there's nothing going on in the y direction. Okay, So I hope that's kind of intuitive. So forces pulling in opposite directions are basically going to cancel each other. That's a truism of life. Let's take an example two. We've got a train here. It's traveling at a steady speed of 40 miles an hour. I'm going to represent that this way. Let's just say it's going that way. It doesn't say which direction. So I'll just assume it's going that way. 40 miles an hour. Boom. There it goes. Suddenly, Mr. Conductor begins running along the train. Along the train. He's on the train. He's running with the train. Seven miles an hour. He's a little slow. In the same direction. So notice, if I were to draw his vector, his vector is a little shorter. It's only seven. But you put the arrows together like this, and you say the train is going 40 miles an hour, and Mr. Conductor is going 7 miles an hour. So if you were in a stationary drone or something looking down at this situation, and let's assume he's running along flat cars so there's no roof or anything, or maybe you've got x-ray vision on your drone, I don't know. But you would see him moving how fast? You would see him moving 47 miles an hour, right? Because the velocities add. Just think of putting a plane with a tailwind, right? The tailwind helps the plane go faster. Or maybe you're rowing a boat with the river current, so you're going to be going a little faster, right? So this is kind of the same thing. It's like the velocities actually add. The train's going 40. He's going 7 in the same direction. He's on the train, actually, so he, it's going to look like he's going 47 compared to the still earth or whatever. Example three, train's going 40 miles an hour. Okay, I like having the train going this way, 40 miles an hour. All of a sudden, Madame Foot begins running on the train, okay, but in the opposite direction with the speed of 7 miles an hour. Now, I could draw the 7 miles an hour over here if I wanted to, but I think I'll draw it over here. So just kind of think of it almost like on top of that arrow, but going the other way. So I guess maybe say negative 7? It's going the other way. So this is kind of like if you're 
if you you're taking a motorboat but you're going upstream your motorboat likes to think it's going a certain speed but because you're going upstream that's slowing you down so the net effect is she's moving compared to the stationary earth or compared to a stationary drone looking down on the situation or whatever she's going 33 miles an hour by the way let me do the same thing as I did up here right so here the train is an X direction component of 40 and a Y component of 0 mr. conductor was going the same way and so that's why they added up to 47 and nothing in the Y direction of course here the train is going 40 to the east if you will it's going that way but uh, Madame foot was going the other way hence the negative and so when you add these X components together you're getting 33 and nothing happening in the Y direction okay so this is what makes the rectangular form so nice by the way is when you have rectangular form you can go ahead and just add your X components go ahead and just add your Y components it's actually the best way to add your vectors is to add the X components add the Y components separately now let's look at this one. So anyway, I hope all three of these are kind of intuitive. You know, the forces of the on the rope are canceling. If you're going the same direction as the train, you just add your speed. But if you're going exactly the opposite direction as the train, you would actually subtract your speed. Okay, I hope those are intuitive. Um, if not, conduct a little experiment. Get on a train or something. I don't know. Example four. Now this one's uh, slightly more complicated, but it's still really cool. We got an airplane. It's pointed due north in a wind that is blowing due east okay so the plane is going 110 miles an hour so let's draw that this is the plane's velocity vector it's 110 miles an hour and it said it was going due north which is why I pointed it straight up that's north now there's a wind going on here and the wind speed is 30 and the wind is not going with the plane and it's not going against the plane it's going sideways the wind is going sideways so I'm gonna draw the wind this way and it's only got a length of 30 so not as long and it's going to the east right yeah well it's, yeah it is going to east good 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 thought I forgot something so the wind is going this way so we're adding two arrows that are kind of not pointing the same way so it's not simply add 1 10 and 30 and it's not simply subtract 1 10 and 30 but we're still going to add these arrows we're going to add them in a vector kind of way so think of this as the x component is 30 and the y component is 110 what do you get well you would get this this is the way the plane is really going and have you ever looked up in the sky on a windy day and you'll see an airplane and the airplane really is kind of facing that's a lousy picture of an airplane but you get the idea that's the propeller so the airplane is pointed that way all right but it, you can see it drift it's drifting with the wind right so boy that's a lousy looking airplane anyway um, this is which way the plane really goes and in fact you could solve for that angle there or that angle there whichever angle you feel like solving for and you would know which way the plane was going how much it was being deflected by the wind and so on so generally speaking the way we're going to add vectors is going to use the components method so let me write this out sort of like an accountant might the accountant would t write down that the plane is going nowhere on the x direction but it's going 110 miles an hour along the y direction then we take we write down or we account for the wind the wind is blowing 30 miles an hour in the positive x direction and it's got nothing happening at all in the y direction the wind doesn't the wind is blowing due east now we add these vectors up we add components so along the x direction 0 plus 0 is 30 and along the y direction 110 plus 0 is 110 this is the true speed and well it's not the true speed and direction but it's it's which way the plane is truly going this it's this vector here this this is the plane's actual vector now what true speed and direction means is basically find the r and the theta r is the length of this thing that's how many miles per hour it's really going and theta would be well theta is standard position which would be there actually so remember we got formulas for this kind of stuff i think i well 
you could just do a Pythag really. So if that's a 30, that's also a 110. We can figure out what R is this way. Do a square root of a 30 squared plus a 110 squared, right? Good old Pythag theorem. So I guess I haven't solved for that yet. So let me do that. 30 squared plus 110 squared equals, take a square root of the answer equals, and I got a 114 point, pretty much 0. 0.0. So the plane is going just about 114 miles an hour. So even though the wind is sideways, it's giving a slight boost to the wind speed. It's not going 110, it's going 114 miles per hour. Now to find that uh, direction, you do a shift tangent of 110 over 30. The tangent of that angle is 110 over 30. So we're doing a shift tangent of 110 over 30. Shift tangent. Do, 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 do. That's a, about a 74.7 degree angle, roughly. So that would be the plane's true speed and direction. 114 miles per hour, 74.7 degrees in standard position, like that. That would be our answer right there. Uh, if you're curious to solve for this angle, you just go 90 minus the 74. So what's that? Like not quite 16, 15.3 degrees. So its bearing is north 15.3 degrees east. Face the north, turn 15 degrees to the east, right? That's which way the plane's really going. Now, isn't that kind of nifty that you can add arrows? The first time I saw that, I was like, really? That works? And it's like, yeah, that works. So the magic of it is right here. You add your x components, you add your y components, and then you get the x and y component of the answer, which you can then turn into an r and a theta to get your true speed and direction. So that's going to be kind of the, the basic method that we use. So let's go to, we got two more examples, one per page here. Um, I gave all those formulas that you've seen before, so just to keep them handy. So remember, uh, you know, a vector can be expressed as r with theta, r with theta, that's called polar form. Um, if you have the x and y components, you can plug them into these formulas to find the r and theta. But you can also express a vector in rectangular form by giving its x component and its y component and listing them that way. If you have the r and theta and you want the x and y component, you can plug them into these formulas, right? So we've seen this before. So cool. Let's do this one. What's this say? This says, Biff flies 200 miles an hour at a bearing of south 20 east. Hmm. Okay. Let's make sense out of that first. South 20 east. So you face the south, which is down here. Turn 20 degrees towards the east. So that's over here. Some, somewhere over here, right? Turn 20 degrees towards the east. So what is this vector really? It's 200 miles an hour. That's the R. And the theta, I want standard position, which is this way. That would be negative 70 degrees, right? If this is 20, that's 70. In standard position, it's negative 70 degrees. So hold on to that. Hold on to that. That's one of our vectors. It's nice to have your vectors in polar form. In fact, I'm going to write that down as sort of like instructions. First, put the vectors in polar form, which means r theta, which means standard position for theta. Okay, that's what I want to do first. What's the other? The wind is going 25 miles an hour, so a lot slower. By the way, that's an arrow. Um, at a bearing of north 70 west. North 70 west, where's that? We'll face the north. Now rotate way towards the west, 70 degrees towards the west, like this. And actually, that's only 25 miles an hour, so it's a much shorter vector, so I should probably erase some of that, right? Try to make it look a lot shorter. So that's, um, this vector has a magnitude of 25 miles an hour, and standard position would be, remember, standard position, you have to rotate from the x-axis, so it would be 90 plus 70, which is 160 degrees. And hang on to that. So those are the two vectors vectors that we wish to add. Find his true speed and direction. That means add the vectors. Those are the two vectors we're going to add. So the first thing I do is I got the, the uh, polar form, and I got the polar form because from the polar form, I can get the rectangular form rather quickly. I can use those formulas. Let me scroll up here a little bit. The x component is r cosine theta. The y component is r sine theta. Now remember, 
This assumes theta is in standard position, which is why I went through all the trouble of figuring out standard position. Those formulas want standard position. Well, I got standard position, I'm good. So for this vector here, all I have to do to find the x component is go r cosine of the negative 70, r cosine theta. All I have to do to find the y component is go 200 sine of negative 70 degrees. So that's that vector expressed in rectangular form. Now do this one. The x component, 25 cosine of 160 degrees. The y component, 25 sine of 160 degrees, like this. Okay. Now I can add them together. And I'm going to use a new uh, color here. So when you add them together, this is the part where I start typing on my calculator. And I just type like this. I go 200 cosine negative 70, make sure you close the parentheses, plus 25 cosine 160, close the parentheses, equals, and this is telling me that my total x component as a decimal is 44 point, oh, I'm going to carry some decimals, 912. That's my x component, and my y component is, well, I'm typing this in, I'm typing 200 sine of negative 70, close the parentheses, plus 25 sine 160, and that comes out to a negative 179 point, whoops, that's, this. ah, I can't wait till they make these pens more pointy, but anyway, negative 179 point, let's go the same number of decimal places, I guess, 388. So there's the x, this is the vx for the answer, this is the vy for the answer, okay? Now they want true speed and direction, which means they want r and theta. That's what true speed and direction means. So to find the r, you just do a, a Pythag thing, 44.912 squared plus, and don't bother typing in the negative, you're just going to square it, it's supposed to go positive. So the r is going to be, let me type this in, 44.912 squared plus, 179.388 squared equals square root answer key equals this comes out to 184 point I'll round back a little bit now R is 184.9 miles per hour so think about that for just a second 184 the planes go in 200 but it's slowed down a little bit by the wind why because the wind is kind of blowing, not with the plane, but it's blowing a little bit against the plane. So yeah, it slows down a little bit. So that seems to match with what we'd expect. Now for the theta. If you grab the formula up there, I invite you to look up there. Well, you've got the paper in front of you probably. You have to do Vy over Vx. Make sure you do Vy over Vx. Don't, don't do those backwards. So this is the Vy here. Put the negative in, negative 1.79.388 goes on top. This is a positive 44.912 goes on the bottom. And so when I type that in, shift tangent of negative 179.388 divided by 44.912 equals, I'm getting negative 75.9 degrees. Now, does that make sense? I would have to believe that it would make sense. So remember with the, um, it's gotta be down here somewhere, right, is, is, is our net. So um, anyway, um, or add 180, that's the thing to keep in mind with this formula. Sometimes you have to add 180, but if I added 180, there's there's no way I believe that the, that the real angle is actually like 105 degrees, no way. Because we're mostly going, pardon me, we're mostly going down and to the right-ish. So this angle is completely believable to me. So I'm not going to add 180. So our answer is we're going about 184.9 miles per hour. Standard position, negative 75.9 degrees. Now if you want to give bearing and all that stuff, negative 75.9 degrees is here. So this angle would be what? Like 14.1 degrees. So you could say south 14.1 east because you face the south you turn 14.1 degrees towards the east if you want to give it as a bearing you can give it this way I like standard position okay negative 75.9 
So what's the overall method? Take a look at back at this again. They gave us some force, some you know velocities here, and first thing we do is we made sure that we knew what they were in polar form, which meant standard position angles, because you have to have standard position angles if you're going to use these formulas: 200 cosine, 200 sine, 25 cosine, 25 sine. So I got my standard position angles. Then I was able to just kind of write x and y components this way. Then I was able to add my x components, add my y components. And then once you have the x and component for the answer, you just use your r theta formula to get true speed and direction. That is your general method for these things. You can add any number of vectors this way. We only added two. Let's look at this example. We're going to add three. That's OK. You can add as many as you want. So here we go. Let's do it one more time. By the way, you may wish to pause and, and uh, at, come back and then pause and come back and as I go through this thing to see if you can work ahead a little bit and then check yourself as you go. be a great exercise. You get more out of this video that way. But um, what do we got? Three-way tug of war and a battle of kettle of borscht. Cabbage soup. Yeah, I'd fight over that. Anyway, Vladimir is pulling with 140 pound force at an angle of 40 degrees. Okay, I'm just gonna draw Vladimir's force here. 40 degrees is something like that, and let's just say that that arrow has a length of 140 pounds. Cool. So actually, this is nice. We don't have to work too hard to get the polar form because they're giving us the standard position angles. That's awfully sporting of them. So there's Vlad. Maybe I'll write that Vlad. Olga. 150 degrees. Where is that? That would be like over here someplace. And she's pulled, actually Olga's a little stronger than Vlad. How do you like that? So Olga's over here and her vector is 160 pounds is the magnitude and the standard position angle. Again, very nice of them. 150 degrees. But at least we get a visual on what's happening here. So she's, whoops, whoops. So she's pulling at the 160 pounds of force. Okay, cool. Ludmila, 130 pounds at an angle of negative 60. So negative 60 would be something like this, roughly. Not quite as long as the 140, so I'll try to make it look a little shorter. So this is Ludmila, however you say that name. And uh, we got 130 pounds going this way, 130 going this way. And so her vector is, well, it's 130 pounds in a direction of, and I love these standard direction, standard position angles because, well, it means we don't have to think too hard about what the standard position is because they told us. Yay. So, okay, time to add these vectors. Which way is this going to go? Well, just as a guess up front before we go anywhere, doesn't it seem like it's going to be more up than down? Because, yeah, it's 130 pounds and it's going mostly down, but I don't know. This is, this, this is 140 going up. It's not going up at the same angle, but then we got help from over here. I don't know. I'm guessing it's more up than down. Probably a little close. Okay, now what about the left, right? Well, that's 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 a tough one, ain't it? Sheesh. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm not gonna guess. I'm not gonna guess. I bet you we get a vector that's not too big. So let's do it. So I'm going to pretend I've got one of those green pads you get at the store, the office supply store to do your accounting in, right? So I'm going to write the Vlad vector um, using rectangular form. R cosine theta comma R sine theta. That's how you get your that's how you get your rectangular form assuming you have standard position which we do. So Vlad we got 140 cosine of 40. That's his x component. 140 sine of 40. That's his y component. Olga. 160, r cosine theta. 160 cosine of 150 in the x direction. 160 sine of 150 in the y direction. By the way, when you type a cosine of 150, the calculator is going to tell you it's negative. So it takes care of that for you, the idea that, well, this is kind of going in the negative x direction. It, it, it knows. The calculator knows. I've always loved that. It knows. Okay, and then who else we got? We got this Ludmila, however the heck you say that name. And so it's 130 cosine of negative 60. Just type it as it says. And this will be a 130 sine of negative 60. Type it as it says. 
now we can add these up. And so the answer, <laughs> by the way, there's another word for answer. Sometimes we call it resultant. So if you hear that word resultant being thrown around YouTube or whatever, that's all they mean. What's the answer? When you add them all up, what do you get? It's called the resultant. Not just the result. The result unt. It's the result unt. Okay, so, well, I might as well keep this color. Adding up in the x direction, or not in the x direction. Well, it is in the x direction. Adding up the x components. I'm typing all this in. 140 cosine 40. Close your parentheses. Plus 160 cosine of 150. Close your parentheses. Plus 130 cosine of negative 60. Close your parentheses. By the way, eyeball your calculator to make sure you're typing things in correctly. You don't want to like hit a button twice by mistake or skip a number by mistake or whatever because that, that's a great way to mess up your answer. Anyway, I got, assuming I didn't mess up my answer, I got a 33.682. Notice that's a very small number, so we're not really going very far in the x direction. Now do the same thing with these y components. So I'm typing this in, 140 sine of 40, close the parentheses, plus 160 sine of 150, close the parentheses, plus 130 sine of negative 60, close the parentheses, bada boom, bada bing. I got yeah, another kind of smallish number, 57.407. In some sense, that's our answer. Our answer has an x component of this and a y component of this, but we want the r theta, really. So you do this. You do the r. You take the, it's basically Pythag theorem, right? Take your x component squared plus your y component squared, and this will give you your hypotenuse. So you take the square root of that. So square root of 33.682 squared plus 57.407 squared equals hypotenuse it's just about 66 point yeah I'll just round it to this 66.6 .6. not much the theta remember the formula for that is you do the vy over the vx so that would mean do a shift tangent of the 57.407 over the 33.682 and what have I got here 57.407 divided by 33.682 equals shift tangent of the answer equals we got a 59.6 degree angle so let's come back up to our little diagram of the ropes and see what we got here it's saying 66 at an angle of 59.6 degrees so 66 would be less than half of this at an angle of what 59 something like this Something like this, yeah, something like this. So 66.6 .6 at an angle of 59.6 degrees. That's what it's saying the answer is. Do you believe it? By the way, should we add 180, you suppose? Maybe it's that answer? Well, you might be struggling a little bit just to look at the diagram and know whether you're supposed to add 180. So here's how you can know for sure. You look at, maybe I should use this and do this in fuchsia-ish. You look at this, since Vx is positive, we do not need to add 180 degrees. That's how you can really know for sure. If your x component is positive, you don't have to add 180. And why is that? If your x component is positive, then when the calculator gives you an angle, of 59.6, of course you can believe it. Your x component is positive. It's pointing that way for sure. It's not pointing this way if it has a positive x component, right? Right. So I, I guess I could have done that with the previous example. Did we have a positive x component? We sure did. We sure did. And because we had a positive x component, maybe I'll even write that here, positive x component for the answer means do not add 180 degrees. 
by the same token, if you get a negative answer for their x component, you will add 180 degrees. Notice, please, I am not talking at all about the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate does not matter. The y-coordinate, positive, negative, does not matter. What matters is the x component. If the x component is negative, you will add 180. If it isn't, you won't. I know where to write this, right here. If vx is negative, that would be the bottom number, add 180 to the answer. Otherwise, don't. Okay, actually, that, that that's a really good thing to write right there. If the x component is negative, add 180 to the answer. Okay, so I think we've done two examples now. So I hope you like this method. It's it's kind of cookbooky in a way. You follow the recipe. You take whatever vectors you feel like adding, put them in the um, the uh, the polar form. So that way you have standard position angles. When you have standard position angles, you're able to just crank using these formulas to write your x and y components. You do that sort of like an accountant would on your green paper with all the columns and lines and everything. When you have your x components, you add them. That's your x component for the answer. When you have your y components, you add them. That's the y component for your answer. Which, it's nice to use the r and theta formulas to get true speed and direction or net force and direction or, or whatever it is. Okay, and now you know how to add, add vectors together which means you can add forces together, which means you can add velocities together, and so on. It's really cool.